All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. As you know, this is the San Francisco MySQL Meetup. Uh, tonight we have Gavin from Box.com. He's going to talk to us about anometer. Anamom I'm not going to be able to pronounce it, so we're just going to skip that and leave that up to Gavin. <laughs> I, uh, I butcher things. So um, Sponsors tonight, IGN. Uh, they're providing the food and the place here. Yay. Um, we are hiring for a DBA, so if you're interested, uh, come see me or see Alan over there on the side. Um, Careers.IGN.com, for those of you who may see this on the internet at some point. Um, other sponsors is Continuant. Um, they are also hiring. And Percona, who is also hiring. Uh, everybody's hiring DBAs these days. Uh, you're all in very high demand. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we also, you know, Box.com looks like they're sponsoring some stuff by bringing a whole huge box full of swag. So that's pretty awesome. Um, what am I forgetting? Oh, our next event is going to be on September 12th. Same place, same bat channel, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that's going to be about renormalizing your SQL. Um, Aaron, am I forgetting anything? Ooh, one at Twitter. That'd be fun. Um, anyway, uh, we always give a chance. There's not many people here tonight, but uh, anybody have any announcements they want to make to the group? <laughs> and just for the sake of the recording, uh, Oracle sponsoring the uh, giving away some tickets to uh, the user stuff. This uh, MySQL Connect. Sorry, I, like I said, I butcher things. Uh, <laughs> and anybody got anything else? Or uh, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Gavin then and uh, learn something new. Hi, my name is Gavin Towie. I'm a, a database administrator at Box.com. Um, just a little bit about, about my background. Um, I started uh, kind of in the early days working with MySQL as a developer uh, back with 323 um, and have kind of followed it, using it for various projects um, until I uh, switched over to being a DBA, and that was about five years ago. Uh, and since then, um, I found it's you know just a really fascinating product to work with. Uh, the community involvement and all the development that goes into it, it's really exciting. It's uh, uh, really interesting the way it continually evolves and improves. And um, I'm just really happy to be uh, working with it and being able to give back to the community by uh, developing and releasing this product as well. So. Let me uh, go ahead and begin. Um, oh, and by the way, actually, before I begin, I just want to get a little bit of feedback about the audience. Um, how many people here are dedicated MySQL DBAs? OK, how many people of those work with a, a team of people? Or are you the, the teams of DBAs? OK. And how many people are just uh, here for the food? <laughs> Great. We have a nice, uh, diverse audience. I like that. Um, OK, excellent. So some developers as well, um, which I'll touch on in this presentation, because that actually is relevant. Um, I'd like to start with a common problem that we all know. The site's slow. And I know all of you have probably heard this from somebody else in your company at some point, uh, that there's an apparent problem, and nobody knows what it is, and you're suddenly tasked with finding out uh, what the problem is. And because it's so often related to databases, uh, they often come to you first. So 
The problem is how you fix it. And you've got to know what the problem is before you can fix it. So really what this is about is a, about diagnosing uh, these server problems. Um, how do we do that, MySQL? Well, let's just look at a brief history of some of the options that we've had, uh, especially when you're looking for performance-related problems, um, which are often application-related problems. Um, when MySQL added the slow query log, uh, it, was, um, it was a great feature, but it was a little primitive. Um, it had a minimum one second resolution time, um, so you couldn't see anything that was happening in your server that was less than one second. That wasn't very helpful. Um, it wasn't dynamic until MySQL 5.1, uh, which means in earlier versions you actually had to restart the server just to enable the log or disable the log. That was pretty painful as well. Um, the script that they packaged with MySQL uh, defaulted to showing average query time at first, and I think a lot of people figured out pretty quickly that wasn't the most important metric to look at. Next, uh, scripts appeared to take advantage of this information, um, most notably the MK Query Digest of the mock hit package. And the log improved. Um, it became dynamic in 5.1, which was huge. You could now turn it on and off in a running server and get information. Um, with the Percona versions of MySQL, you had uh, microsecond thresholds that you could set, uh, which meant that you could see more about what was going on in the server. This was huge. This was um, quite an uh, advance. But there were still some problems with this. Uh, most notably, the process of analyzing performance and keeping track of things. Because you grab some logs, and then you have to process them. And you probably don't want to stop there. And you're probably looking for differences, which means you have to do a lot of comparisons. Um, and then you want to see it in a different way, so you change the sort order. But it takes all that time to reprocess the logs. You have more than one server, so you grab the logs from other ones and then you have to all process them together. You try to keep them, but then they disappear. And then you're trying to find out what has changed in your performance in the last couple months, and pretty soon you start to feel overwhelmed. Well, so then you're looking for an easier way. Uh, and MySQL comes out with the Enterprise Monitor. This was a really cool tool. Um, it included some pretty detailed ways of getting information about queries running through the system, but unfortunately it had one drawback. It had enterprise costs. And so your one server has a slave, and you add a few more. And as your, your infrastructure scales, so do your costs. And you realize, in the end, you could have bought yourself one of these. So you're looking for a better way. If you had something that was free, like PT Query Digest, and was simple to use, like Enterprise Monitor, that's where Anemometer comes in, with a confusing name. I like to think I'm helping uh, people expand those their vocabulary. An anemometer, the definition of it is a tool in a weather station used to measure wind speed. And I chose this name because uh, measuring SQL queries is often like trying to measure the wind. They fly through your server, and you often don't see them until they're gone and have left their mark. But if you could actually get a handle on them and really kind of nail down what's going on in your server with your queries, you would have a really powerful tool. So what it is, it's a visual slow query reporting tool. Uh, it's open, horse, uh, open source. Not open horse. <laughs> it's PHP based. It's a very simple web application. And it's built on top of the Percona toolkit. Uh, so a lot of the heavy lifting is done by other tools. And the advantage of that is improvements in other tools, which are being actively developed, will also filter back to improvements in this. Its features is it helps you keep a history of performance data. 
It helps you aggregate query statistics from across all your servers. It can show you when things have appeared in your system, when they have first run. Um, it can tell you when things change. And it tracks a lot of other information about the system. It becomes kind of a central focus point uh, for everybody to interact with uh, your performance data about, the, uh, about your queries. And this is important because Query performance, I think everybody knows, is probably one of the easiest ways to get uh, performance improvements in your application. You know, by tuning your server, you can possibly get an order of magnitude, maybe more, buying new hardware, um, you can get improvements. But it's only by applying proper indexes, rewriting queries, uh, caching things that you can hope to get that you know, three orders or more magnitude of performance difference. Um, so it's really important to know what your query performance is, to track it, and to be aware of changes, and have that information at hand. And this is the result, at least at our company. Um, the blue line there is throughput. Uh, the red line is the average query time. Now, they've both increased, but since we started gathering data, this is about a one-year period our throughput has tripled. You can see it's about 3x higher. Uh, the average query time has crept up, but it's still below uh, the five millisecond mark down there. So our average query time is still pretty low, even while tripling the amount of throughput that we're doing in our system. And I think that's pretty huge. And the information I don't have on that graph, which additionally, is that we did all of this while decreasing the average server load on our MySQL servers. So for a while, probably in the middle was about half of what it was when we started. And of course, with increasing throughput, it starts to creep up a little. But that's huge. We've gotten you know, many orders of magnitude of capacity uh, improvement in our servers by really paying attention to queries and really tuning them aggressively and having this information at our fingertips. So here's a few slides with a quick tour, and I'll get to a demo later so you can actually see uh, the interaction with it. Um, but here's kind of one of the basic interface pages. You get to see a graph of your queries. Um, in this case, it's showing the, the count of queries over time. Um, and the graph is interactive. Uh, you can highlight a section of it and zoom in, and then the information at the bottom, the table, actually shows you exactly the queries that make up that sample. So you can find hotspots and zoom in on them and see exactly what was going on at that time. The basic search interface gives you uh, quite a few database or quite a few fields from uh, the report so you can customize and get exactly what you're looking for. It lets you manage multiple environments. Um, the configuration is very easy to set this up for a whole group of servers. Um, so you can store you know, all your live data and all your uh, development data separately and switch between them. And it's easy to share. Uh, all the forms are using get params, so you can just copy and paste things around. It's easy to get, uh, create a custom report and paste that in an email, and then somebody else in your team um, like if you're a DBA talking to a developer, you can send this link to a developer and they can soon see exactly what you're looking at. And when you're digging down into individual queries, uh, you can see relevant history graphed. Um, you can see samples of the query that have been gathered. And you can also configure it to go out and grab the explain plan and create table information and table status. So basically all that information you need is right there at your fingertips and you don't have to go back to your server and go dig for it. It also allows you to enter uh, information about the query so you can keep notes and communicate among a team. Um, I don't think I'll go over the install process in detail right now. Um, I'll leave it, I left it in the slide so if people want to grab them they can have a quick reference but I don't think, the install process is very simple. You basically clone the git repo in a, in a um, web accessible directory. 
uh, set up a user and start processing logs into a database. So I think everybody uh, can handle that. So before I go into a demo, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about just the, uh, the exact nature of collecting slow query logs um, and some of the things that we feel is important to keep in mind when you do that. So one important thing is logging to a file because the table logging uh, has that same old one second re minimum resolution threshold, which is just really unusable. Even if you're concerned about the I.O. overhead of logging to a, a file, it's be I think it's best to, to find some way around that rather than, than accepting the limitations of the table-based logging. When you log, log everything. Because it's not the queries that are executing you know, for 60 seconds or 30 seconds or a couple minutes, even though those are not great to have running through your system. But if those only happen once or twice a day, that's not really what's keeping your server busy. Um, Often it's, it's the query that's uh, executing for 50 milliseconds, but that's happening you know, 100 times a second. Those are the kinds of things you want to see, so you want to really get a complete picture of everything that's going on in your server. Um, and even the, the Percona version of MySQL has options that let you log extra detailed information about what's going on specifically with InnoDB. Um, adding backtraces to your queries when you send them to the server is really helpful because it lets you, at a glance, look at something. And especially when you're working with your developers, you send that to them. And then they, then they know exactly where in the code that was executed from. So they can look at it quickly and know uh, where to focus their attention. And by the way, just as an aside, if anybody has any questions or comments or uh, you know, feel free to interrupt me at any time. So once you're logging everything, it becomes kind of impractical to leave that log on all the time. So the way around that is generally you want to sample it, you know, turn it on with a full threshold and get that fire hose of information, but only for a little while. And then you can turn it back on, off again. Uh, we started with a consistent percentage of about 1%. We found even 1%, even knowing 1% of what's going through your system is huge. And you can spread that out. Um, to try to get a good statistical sample. And then, of course, you process the data with PT Query Digest, which is a great tool. It's just a little hard to use for performance over time, especially when you're dealing with a lot of samples. So Anemometer actually uses it under the hood to do the processing of the logs, and it reports on the stored data. So they work really well together. And then a few notes about upcoming features. In MySQL 5.6, um, they've added a new performance schema tables, uh, the event statement summary by digest, the most useful table with the longest name. And uh, this continually grabs performance information about queries. You can tell it how many query samples you want to analyze. Because it keeps it in memory, you do have to set some thresholds on it. And it'll continually update those digest statistics, much like the uh, query digest tool does for the slow log. And it keeps it in memory and makes it accessible. Um, when I first saw this feature, I realized that it wouldn't be hard to modify Anemometer to uh, work with this. And so I did pretty quickly. And now it's completely ready to work with the new and improved features uh, that are available in MySQL 5.6. So in summary, um, I really feel that like slow logs, that uh, keeping them around, that digesting the information, that, uh, that they're a gold mine of information, that you really don't want to neglect them when you're looking to optimize performance in your server. Um, and it's really important for optimization to really focus your, on, your attention on the things that are costing the most. And this is what it helps you do, is it really helps you focus on what is most expensive in your servers and really uh, put your effort in some place that matters. 
having a central location that everybody can look at and see and it's very plain what's going on makes it e really easy to get feedback um, to show other people why these things are important to fix and lastly having an open source tool to do that uh, we're really proud of it and we hope other people will find it useful um, so right now let me see if this works So let me get. Oops. So I have a script here, generating load against a server, uh, and I have a cron script. Let me get out of here. That was just a Perl script I have, which just spawns some threads and does some queries against the server. I'm, I'm artificially generating load so I can show you some sample data, because I can't show you internal you know, company data. Um, and the script, the script I have uh, is just, I, put, I have a simple script on cron to run query digest. So that's all it is. It just turns off logging rotates the log, turns it back on, and uses PT Query Digest to process it and put it in a database. And the result is, oh. Uh, that's interesting. I think, you know, this is this is on a local machine, but I'm, a, I'm I think I'm afraid I have one dependency on a JavaScript file that it's probably looking across the internet for. I'm not sure. Yeah, see, I, well, it's, it's still loading. The page is waiting on something. So I think that means that oops. <laughs> yeah, I think it means this internet connection isn't working. Yes. Yes. So that's that's one of the other limitations of you know kind of the method of using PT Query Digest is typically you collect logs from one server with it, and then you digest it, and it it kind of ends up. And you can't tell one ho if you put it in a database, you can't tell one host from another. Um, or if you keep it separate, then it becomes hard to do aggregate stats across it. Um, with just a very um, small trick, and in fact, I can show it to you in this, um, this filter option here is, m is made to uh, put Boolean conditions so you can filter out events, but you can trick it into um, assigning variables to your own value in that event. So in this case, um, I add the host name of the server to each event, and then I then the digest script is smart enough that whenever it encounters a, a field in the table that it's inserting into that has the same name as one of these fields in your event, it'll automatically look for it and update it. Um, so I'm I'm using that, and then I have my unique key include the host name and the sample time and the query digest. So that means. I can have many servers all collecting, and they all insert into the same database, and then I can aggregate, I can look at statistics across all my servers at once. Um, the interface here has, here it is, um, has a host name field, so you can either look at a single host name here, which it populates as a dropdown, or you can look at all your hosts. 
uh, simultaneously. Um, and this is, this is huge because, you know, who runs a single MySQL server anymore? You know, you've got a lot of machines and it's not necessarily just enough to know, to look at one machine and say, you know, what's the most expensive query running on this server? You want to know what's the most expensive query that runs across all your machines. And it may not be the same one that's most expensive if you look at one single server because in aggregate, you know, you might have something else that bubbles up to the top. Um, and yeah, I'm just using the slow query log. I think TCP dump would be an option because you can digest it with, you know, PT query digest as well. Um, and I think the only downside there is uh, when you truncate packets or something like that, you might not get the full original query or something. So it's it's certainly an option. You could you could take that data, it'll digest it, it'll put it into this table. Um, so you can use that as a as a method as well. Um, so here's kind of a report. The basic report groups by checksum, so it aggregates queries together. It shows you the last day, and orders by uh, the greatest aggregate time, um, and shows you the top 20. It lets you. It shows all the fields that are in these tables. You can define custom fields, which are go in a config file. Uh, so you can calculate values based on that. And then there's the review table and the review history table, which is your fact and dimension table. And you can just go and select the columns that you want to see. As you can see, especially if you're using the, the Procona stuff uh, with the extended slow query logging, there are a great many fields. Uh, you can get, a, especially about the InnoDB. Um, and turning on extended logging. I don't think 5.5 has this, uh, the Oracle version of 5.5 will track uh, queries that do uh, temp tables or file sorts or stuff like that and put that information in the slow, qu slow query log for you. And that makes it really easy. For instance, you know, you can go in here and you can just change the, um, the order by. if you wanted to, for instance, find queries that are creating temp tables. Mm, this is going to take a while because of that file. But so you would go in there and then see if I can, and it's not letting me scroll over. Problem with using a virtual machine on a small space. So it has that column, and if you sorted by this column when this page loads, you would be able to see clearly, you know, find queries that are most doing temp table operations. So it makes it really easy to just go in there and find different properties. And all of these columns, like the query time average, you could find your worst average performing query time. You can find queries that are doing uh, the most, that are sending the most rows or examining the most rows. And one I like to use is the the ratio I have here between rows examined and rows sent. So you can find queries that are looking at a lot of rows and sending back very few, which is usually like, you know, kind of kind of hard to, to find on the, the application end. So it gives you a lot of options for analyzing this data in a different way. And because you have it here and because it's already in a table, it's really quick to create a report. Um, and it shows you you can show the raw SQL that it's generating. And that's essentially all it's doing. It's an interface that generates a query like this um, to generate the report. And it just makes it easy so you don't have to do all this by hand. Yes? Yes. Now, how are you writing your joints? So the question is, is um, that on the query detail page, uh, if you're looking at a query that joins multiple tables, he's saying that it only shows uh, the first table. Let me see if I can find an example, actually, because I have some queries that do joins. It should be showing all of them. If it's not, it's a bug. It was designed to grab all the table. 
Are you using the join keyword or using the comma? Okay. So let me see. Actually, one way to find that is this field. So this just does a free form uh, search within the uh, text of the query. So you, if you're looking for queries on a particular table, um, you can just go ahead and put that in there. Um, let me see. Yeah, unfortunately, this is yeah slow because the Wi-Fi I think is slow. Um, Oh, you. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead and ask. Yes. In, so I'm doing it every 15 minutes for 36 seconds and then using the Percona feature. So the question was um, uh, about the sampling rate and, and that we're doing it one uh, that we're doing 1% and he's asking how we're getting that 1%. Um, our method um, isn't the most sophisticated right now. It's just uh, a, on cron every 15 minutes for 36 seconds. Um, and we're using the, um, the Percona features that let you do the filtering. So the rate limit on the slow query log. So we're only, for that 36 seconds, we're only logging one in four um, one in four sessions, one in four queries, um, because 36 seconds an hour is 1% of, of the time during the day. Um, but we're spreading that out and getting a little, little better sampling because of that. Other suggestions um, I've heard from other people uh, were, be, were to do things like you could even, if you wanted a better statistical distribution, you could you know, do it more frequently for a short period and also put some random value in there, like you could make your cron sleep for you know, a random amount of time for like up to 10 minutes. And so you would get, your cron wouldn't kick off at the exact same time within that, that quarter of an hour. Um, but I haven't gotten into that just because uh, the current method was working really well. Let's see if I can find, is this the result? Yeah, so this has a join here, and so this is showing both for me. If, if you're having a problem with this, um, let me, you know, definitely let me know. We'll see if I can reproduce what you're seeing, and I would, I would love to fix it and make it work for you. Okay, so the, the question was um, that he's running multiple masters and wants to see the explain plan on different machines so he can tell if there's any differences um, because it's, it's very true. It may not be performing the same. It may not get the same uh, explain plan on all machines. And so that might be an easy way to ter determine if your index statistics are off on a, on a certain machine. Um, so it doesn't do that right now, but that's a great feature request. So I'll, I'll make a note of that. And this is uh, the query detail page. Shows you the first time it's seen and the last time it's seen. Um, and you can search by those fields as well. So if you, you, know, you have a release process and you know, they release code and something go, gets weird and you find performance is, is changed dramatically on your database servers, um, so you may want to go in there and see, well, what were the new queries that were introduced since this release process or this event or since this time, because a lot of times it's uh, something that just changed or happened recently. Um, other stuff here, so it gives you the fingerprint, which is what it uses to do the digest. Um, it shows you a sample, uh, the last sample that it found, and then you can go over here and see more samples. So if you want to page through results, 
um, of example queries, which is great if you're actually doing analysis on them. Uh, you can put, if you put your server connection information or a way to parse the query and find that connection information um, in the config file, then you can have it uh, automatically go and grab the explain plan for you. Um, you can also have a plugin to use Visual Explain Plan. I don't use it a lot, but it was very easy to, to do this as long as you have Percona Toolkit installed, so I figured why not. And then the create table statements and then the table status information. Um, in addition to that, there's a place for comments. Um, and we added a couple status fields, so you can, you know, you can customize these pretty easily too. Um, these are just some generic statuses. You know, you might go, you might be looking through a lot of queries and have to tag something. You might not be able to address it right away, or you might want to track the status of things that uh, are in the process of being fixed. And then you can put in who did it, especially if you're working in a team. And then at the bottom is a history uh, aggregated by day. So you can go back and see if there's been any changes in performance. Uh, one of the things we found when we deployed this was that um, not only do a, does our operations staff use it, but we found that our developers really liked it as well. Um, they liked being able to get this information about a query. They really liked that they could look at something that was expensive in the system, make a change, and then go back to this interface and see exactly what the effect of their change was. Um, so that really motivated them to kind of dig into this on their own and find things to fix. Um, and we've also been able to use it. There's a few other, uh, a, a, a mode where you can call it as an API call, which sends back report data as JSON or JSON blobs. Um, and that allows you to connect it to other processes, like maybe your development process or your release process. So you can monitor your development servers, get reports, and send that back, or you can create a report that checks for you know, abnormal query conditions in your live environment and then sends you a report when it finds things that you should take a look at. Yeah, so in our environment, we just restrict that with an HT access authentication file um, and uh, our, our VPN rules and stuff like that. So we just, we just decide through the other kind of security, standard security procedures, how to, who to give access to and, and who uh, is, is not allowed to see sensitive information like that. The, the question was, uh, how do you restrict access to sensitive data um, displaying it in a report like this, you could poten potentially be showing internal information or customer sensitive information. Um, and the response is that, you know, you deal with it with access controls in kind of the traditional method. Um, is there any other questions? Right, so the, per the question was can't, uh, normalization be done on the data before you put it in. Um, and yes, actually, if you did not uh, want to store the full query, you could just eliminate, there's a column called sample in, in these tables, and actually you can just not put that column in there and it won't populate it with an actual query sample. It'll just show you the, the fingerprint version, which has all the variables stripped out. Um, the only downside to that is that then you can't run an explain on it because you don't have an actual query, you just have a, a pattern. Um, you, and so there's quite a bit of other information that you can't get, which was handy for us to have. And, and I think for our own purposes, we really appreciated that when we were trying to troubleshoot problems, that we actually had an example of a query that we could go use and didn't have to do additional work to go get that. Okay. 
the, that's a good point. The, the response was that that you know he was suggesting sample sensitive data on demand and don't keep it in the database. That when you see a problem, you should go out and go collect the information that you need to diagnose it instead of storing that full time. And that's that's definitely um, a valid technique, and that's definitely worth considering. Um, and in fact, you mentioned the the um, Facebook patch, they have a socket that you can connect to. In fact, actually, a while ago, I, I ported that that code to the uh, Percona version of MySQL, made a patch for that, so you can actually, I'm hoping they, they add it back in, because it does something uh, very else important as when it comes to slow query logging. Uh, one of the downsides to slow, slow query log is that there is a single mutex um, on all writes to the slow query log. So it can be a serialization point which can have performance penalties. Uh, one of the main motivations, I think, behind their um, their code, that, that patch that logs to a socket instead, is that it gets rid of that mutex. When they log to a socket, they don't use the mutex. So you can gather logs in a, in a little more performant way that, that'll probably have less impact on your server. Uh, we're not using that in production right now. Um, we're probably hoping, we're, I mean, we're hoping that Percona uh, integrates that back into one of their releases and so we can have kind of their testing and stuff behind it. Um, but it is something that we're looking at doing. A, sam a sample to a socket. Yeah, it would be a powerful feature and I think it would be um, affected by the, the rate limit. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that works. But actually, don't quote me on that. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, you could certainly, the, so the question is the way that the um, filter tag is used to put kind of your own fields in the event so you can add those to the database, um, can you use that to put other tags in there, and, and absolutely. And that's one of the things that's kind of on my to-do list is um, we, we put query information or kind of system information in, inside of a comment w along with the backtrace. And I was considering trying to come up with a general method of parsing those values into key value pairs so you can add that to the event. And, and so you can have something that does that parsing in the filter tag. And so essentially add any of your own arbitrary fields um, in fact, you might want to like, you know, add the the um, like the 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 front end page if you're you know running a website. You might have that so you can find out which which uh, pages on your front end are generating like abnormal load versus others or something like that. Any any kind of tagging and grouping and stuff like that would would lend itself uh, to this. So it's definitely yeah, it's definitely possible to extend that. Anything else? So just final notes. Project page on GitHub. Uh, the slides are available at that URL, box.com anemometer. And like everybody else, yes, we're hiring. <laughs> and uh, we have some t-shirts here um, and different sizes. Uh, feel free to take one. Uh, I would like to give you one in exchange for uh, a business card or other contact information, but if you don't have it, we'll still give you a shirt. Thank you.